Hello everyone, I'm Toby from abrandrama.com and I got a new Max for Life device for you which is playing synced pitches, triggering synced pitches from a second MIDI source. So why? Because maybe you want to play a little bit more than only your drum sounds. Maybe you want to play some bass sounds and some chords while you are playing drums or while you're triggering something else. So this means a synced MIDI pitch source. Could be MIDI clips sending MIDI notes, could be session view or could be arrangement view in Ableton Live. It could be um, yourself playing some chords uh, via a Maxwell Live device or it could be yourself playing some chords on an e-piano or um, just playing a few notes from somewhere else. So this could actually mean someone else could play the chords and you could trigger stuff via your MIDI trigger device. So the trigger device could be any MIDI um, device which is sending MIDI notes. So for example, I use an Akai MPD 218 here, but that could be your drums as well, your electronic drums, a drum pad like SPDSX or whatever. And um, it could be as well your acoustic drums having triggers on there and converting this trigger signal into MIDI. So um, I will go and I will explain quite a lot in this whole run through tutorial here. So um, first of all, those are Max for Live devices. Max for Live only works with Ableton Live and Max for Life is included in Ableton Life Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Life Standard. Then you would need my devices as well and they are linked in the video description here below or you can head over to abletondrama.com and look for the Synced Pitch Trigger device. Okay, so where do we start? Let's talk about the source of MIDI here. So for example, we have a few chords playing here. Let's fold this down a little. So we have those chords playing from this MIDI clip here and have a little shaker just as the tempo information in the background. And on those track, we need to put on one device which is grabbing all this note on information, note on and note off actually. There's a little tricky part with the sustain if we play with someone live. Um, I will explain this later in this video. but. This device here is grabbing those notes and is sending those over via a track pipe, I call those. It's just a virtual MIDI connection. So you need to put this on the track where your chords are coming from or put this on the track where someone, um, you're grabbing the live MIDI someone is playing live. And you need to route this, you need to turn this on and to route this to a track pipe. I select a track pipe one here and this track pipe one is being then um, in the pitch source, like on the main device, you need to turn on the pitch source here and set this to track pipe one as well. And now we are already able to see that if we switch on the sync pitch here, we are able to see what kind of notes are being sent and received via this pitch pipe. So now that we're getting the notes, we are able to set up to trigger those notes in various different ways. Devin, de, various different ways. Okay, so for example, if I, let's take this chain here first. So this is now the next MIDI track here. I have the sync pitch trigger device on here and I have the track pipe and the pitch source being activated. I now need to set up a trigger pitch. So I need to route my MPD to 18 into this track here and I need to set the monitor to in or I need to set, let's turn off the drum sounds for one second. So I need to route the MIDI from this MIDI trigger device into this track here and need to switch on the arming if my monitor is set to auto or set the monitor to in, then the MIDI will be passed through all the time. So now I just need to select the trigger pitch notes. I need to activate this. So I could activate a whole range. So now from C minus two up till G eight. So all notes will 
um, be received from this device. So for example, if I now play, we can hear all those notes are triggering the, note, the notes which are being received via the pipe. Um, I just want single notes here. I would just want single pads to actually play those notes. So what I can do now is I turn this on. I press S for syncing, for learning. And now I just need to hit my um, MIDI note or whatever um, like uh, whatever you're using here. If you're using a drum, sending over a trigger to MIDI note, pitch, just hit the drum and then it's detecting automatically the right pitch. In my case, that's an E1 here. And now this one is receiving stuff and if my MIDI chords are sending stuff, I can play those chords now on the second track and obviously those chords will change depending where my MIDI source currently is playing. So the note offs are being sent over here as well. So if I turn off the first track and just play the second track, we can hear this one, two. And you can hear um, I'm using a live velocity here and a certain setting for a duration of here. So let's first have a look on the live velocity. So for example, if I want to play live velocity and that's usually like it's most cases I want to do this, I need to activate this. So now let's turn this down a little so I can play much louder. Uh, turn it up. You can hear, depending on how hard I hit, the live velocity of my trigger MIDI um, is being taken over or is being taken to uh, for the notes I'm playing here now. I could set this, I could deactivate this and now the notes velocity from my pitch source would be taken. Okay, most cases, I guess most people will use this with a live velocity. Okay, so the next one would be the duration. So if I play this and if I still, you can hear it's, it's turning off automatically at some point. And this is the point which is taken from the pipe, which means from the original MIDI source here. So if the note is off and if the chord are changing automatically, this is triggering and off for the notes I'm currently playing here via my synced pitch trigger device. So I could change this to from trigger and this way I could say on release, the notes are still playing, on release from my trigger, the notes will be now taken off. That becomes really musical as soon as we go into the arpeggiator. There is one more note off function here. I can press this button here. Um, yeah, and then the note off, a note off will be triggered and I could set this up to a different pad here as well. So for example, if I take this note here, so now if the pitch is playing, a second pad could trigger the note off here as well. Obviously, there are more ways to do this for the duration, but let us use and let us start to use the arpeggiator here because this is like, this is where it's getting really musical. So I could actually not only play the full chords all at once at the same time, I could trigger them from low to high, high to low, as played or random. So let's go through those different modes. One very important thing here you might have noticed already, as soon as I turn on the arpeggiator, the live velocity will be used automatically. Yeah, so always when the arpeggiator is on, the live velocity from your actual trigger, MIDI trigger device will be used. You can fix this um, to, a, to a set velocity as well via um, the MIDI effect velocity or via my um, velocity devices here as well. If you want to use a different velocity, or it could be um, done via um, most MIDI controllers or a lot of MIDI controllers here as well. But just so you know, live velocity is always being switched on when you're using the arpeggiator and that makes sense as well, musically. So I now have those notes and I can still see the synced pitch here. 
um, just to um, show you as soon as a, a chord is coming in or a note is coming in, it will turn on and show you this. So. And I can now play those quite musical already. Okay, so I could actually now say um, low to high, high to low would sound like this from up down. As played uh, would be like um, the, the order like someone is playing those notes. Okay, so if you play with a live player and they're not coming in at the same time, if you want to use this setting, it's as played. Or random is really nice as well. Um, yeah, you can go quite musical here already. And this is really interesting. Now, if we combine those with the duration, so let's say we want to have the note off um, happening when I'm triggering again. So now the note will last until I hit an, the next. Let's say low to high. So the notes will ring. Okay, so I could set the notes to be um, in a certain, um, to stay on a certain note value here as well. So for example, let's set those two um, full bar notes, notes here. So now I have, if, uh, there we go. And the note off will happen after one bar, depending on your master um, BPM here as well. So I could now say, well, actually, I want those those notes to overlap. And this is where I can switch on the polyphonic mode here. So this is set to monophonic no mode now. So notes will ring after another and turn each other off. If I set this to on, it's like polyphonic mode. I will. Ah. There we go. Yeah, so I could use um, different techniques here as well. If I now want those notes not to ring over the next chord, I could still um, switch on the off um, act, the, the, the off section here, which would mean every time this is passing through, going to the next chord here, it will turn those notes off. So that makes sense if it's getting too cluttery here. So let me show you this. So if those notes are ringing polyphonic, let's turn this up a little. Still sounds nice, but They are still ringing over the next chord. If I now activate this off button here, they will turn off if when the chord is changing. Okay, so let's put down the delay so that gets more obvious. Let's turn the um, the note off off, just to give you. Yeah, so they are ringing longer here. So obviously, combining those things here make can make things really really musical already. Okay, so let's go through some more musical examples here. How you can set things things up and makes them sound really really cool so for example on this e-piano track here i now have two devices in chains so both are receiving midi here if you're not familiar with the chain concept um i will put in the link in the video description or have a look on ableton.com about the chaining concept here so i'm using more than one device actually now here and i'm playing with two buttons now. So one device is playing um, an arpeggiator. 
And the second one is playing the chords, the full chords. Bam. So this way I already have a really nice chord and arpeggiator thing happening. I have a third track here, which is a bass sound here. And um, this um, it has some special stuff on here. Yes, and I want to add the second note here when I'm playing the snare later on to the bass as well. So I'm adding the E1 here as well. Start, please, start. Yes. There we go. So, this bass sound here is a really good example of showing you, like, actually, you need to think modular here with the MIDI information you are creating. So, for example, I have this bass sound here, and this bass sound, as we can see, it's a sampled uh, bass. Um, instrument here in Ableton Live and you don't have the high notes we got up here. So for example, if I'm playing those notes, if I'm triggering those notes, it's not triggering those higher notes. So actually there are two reasons here why I actually want to use, I want to use this note information, but I want to change the pitch of this note information. And for this, there is an additional device which is um, bought sep uh, sold separately and it's a set fixed pitch range device. So I'm actually getting all those notes information from those chords here, but I'm setting those to a certain range. So I only want the bass to trigger notes into a lower range, which makes sense musical for this bass range here as well. So I have those higher pitch notes now here and they are being transposed automatically down under this value here I'm setting in the fixed pitch range. So um, if I set this up to all the way up to G8, so I can see now all those notes are being triggered, but there are no samples in a bass for this higher notes here. So what I want to do is I want to use this device to set all those notes um, to be only in the lower range and we can see and hear now all note pitches are producing a sound but they are pitched automatically down. So as I said this is a second device which is available um, as a separate, it's a separate thing here. But um, same as we, or I was mentioning with the velocity earlier, you want to actually think like, how do I want to use the MIDI, um, the MIDI note pitches I produced here? How do I want to use them now after I set those MIDI note pitches? So um, if we turn on the whole thing here now, We can hear um, that it's really musical already because I'm using different um, note ranges and note pitches here. I set up the same for um, the keyboard sound here, this higher one. It's quite high. And that's due to, I put in a MIDI pitch device after that. So usually it would sound like this. Uh, am I on the right track? Yes, it's quite low. It's using the same, the same note pitches I'm getting from the um, MIDI source here, from my MIDI clip. If I set those up, they are getting a little bit separated for some, uh, some people might this, find this too high already. It's quite noisy. Maybe you want to set the velocity down a little, but this, you know, it creates some more um, dynamic ranges here or you're using a, a bigger frequency range already here now because you're separating stuff. Cool, okay, so if you're using a MIDI pitch source here, for example, if you're playing with someone who's using a sustain pedal, um, things get a little bit tricky because uh, we 
know now that we need to have notes ringing. So all those notes which are still playing until the note of this note information is being sent over. It's a little bit different if you are using a um, sustain pedal here. So let me quickly show you. If I now can do this, I can now do this live. Which parts do I want to use? Let's say I want to use um, those two instruments here only. So I have the keyboard sound now and I'm playing this live. I'm sending this in live and we can see the notes being shown up on here. Uh, maybe let's use this one here. And yes, so if I'm playing notes here now, I can trigger them live. And as soon as those notes disappear, there's nothing I can trigger. So if I have a note hold, it's playing this note. If I release this note, it's being not, there is note information. So with a sustain pedal, it gets a bit tricky because a sustain pedal, sustain pedal is making this chord still ring, yeah? But the notes are off. So we can see the notes are here. We can still hear the notes because I'm pressing a sustain pedal now, but the notes are not in the buffer they're not being sent over because we need we need to have this note off here um, so for this particular um, use case I created a device as well which is a separate device here as well and it's translating the sustain pedal to note on and note off signal so if I'm using this and I can see this directly in here I'm getting this note information and I need to reset this one. So now I can see if the sustain is pressed, it's red and the notes are still um, ringing and it's they are still being sent as a note on. So um, for example, if we use a MIDI clip here, which has this pitch, um, sorry, not pitch band, the pedal information on here, sustain pedal it's called. And this is this part here. So the notes are already off, but the sustain is being used here. So let's have a listen to that one. It's the same chords, but played a little bit different and have a sustain information on here. So now if we look in here, we can see even that the notes are being turned off they are not played, but they are sustained via the sustain pedal. Those notes are still like it's this device here. It's translating that the notes are still being on and they're actually not hold down on the keyboard anymore. So if you're playing with someone or if you're using clips with a sustain pedal, which sustain pedal information, or if you play with someone who's playing live, and is using the sustain pedal, you want to check out the translate sustain to note on and off device here. It's part of a pack for um, handling sustain a little bit different because Ableton Live is um, doing a few things in the background with the sustain which are not always as practical. So in the links as well or head over to abletondrama.com to get this translate um, sustain to note on and off as well. Okay, so now I showed you how you can use and trigger stuff which is coming from a second MIDI source. Now I want to show you how we can use this whole technique the other way around with my devices as well. So um, let us quickly record something to just uh, make sure I can explain this really good. So let's record some MIDI pitches here. One, two, three, four. Not the tightest I played here, but you get the picture. So now this MIDI is being recorded here. And it's playing the pitches which are coming from my MIDI source track here, which is sending over via the MIDI pipe. So now let's say I actually want to have those sounds. I still get the drums, but I want to add different chords here. So now I'm playing chords 
on my SL Studio and sending those chords in to being triggered and the pitch is being triggered here as well. So um, I do this quite high now just so that you can see. Two, three, four. Yeah, and you can hear and you get you you get the idea of like this could be live chords live maybe being played from someone else or you could play uh, first some rhythms rhythm stuff and then have your chords changing and all the other instruments and all the other piped um, MIDI tracks would re-trigger the chords you are playing live here or you're feeding in via a different MIDI source. Okay, I hope you get the picture here. There will be more tutorials coming for this particular devices here for the whole uh, sending synced pitch trigger devices here. This is kind of like a new technique. People have done this before, but it's the first time this is available. Um, to my knowledge, obviously, to my knowledge, this is available as a Max for Life device for you to try out. There will be um, new things coming up and certain questions and then I will um, make sure to answer those questions. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or come to the Ableton Drama Facebook group and ask them there. And then um, if there are topics more people are asking about, I will try to do uh, tutorials on doing that. Again, those devices are Max for Life devices. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. You can get those devices, follow the links in the video description or head over to ableton.com and look for Synced Pitch Trigger. Yes, okay, I'm looking so much forward to what people are coming up with with this technique and um, yes, stay tuned um, and check out my other devices if this is exciting for you. I have a lot of stuff which is going to be interesting for you. Take care, bye bye.